Good morning. My brothers uh, and I want to welcome each one of you to the service today. And we do so in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I think everybody is familiar, I believe, with uh, those who are up on the roster with me today, but uh, I do have Lowell, Brother Lowell Quick, who will bring the invocation, and Mark Hesmeyer, who will bring the benediction today. And we have our brother Tom Steele, who indeed will bring us our uh, message throughout the hour to come. And I know Tom would appreciate your prayers uh, in the moments ahead as he uh, prepares himself to bring forth the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today, as uh, Michael mentions Children's Day, And actually, when I picked out a call to worship for this day, I didn't have any idea that today was Children's Day. I think that's been a week or two ago or something. I don't know exactly why it came about, but it did. And I picked out what I felt that God and His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, wanted brought. And a little later, I was aware that it was Children's Day today. Who should Children's Day be for? I'd like to tell you there should be for every one of you. Because every one of you is supposed to be God's children. And if you've come to the age that I am, and I'm not that little child that God wants me to be, it's time that I change and become that little child. And that call is to each and every one of you today. I had a talk with a young child this morning in a class, Nephi. And I told him that I hoped and prayed that he never changes. That he grows 
but he never changes. A little child shall lead us. You little child with your shining eyes and dimpled cheeks. Now look at you, Holly, with the beautiful smile you have on your face, and Aaron, you too. And all of you children, Ian, I've seen a smile on your face many times this morning too. How beautiful it looks. You can lead us along the pathway to the more abundant life. We blundering grown-ups need in our lives the virtues that are in yours, the joy and enthusiasm of, enthusiasm of looking forward to each new day with glorious expectations of wonderful things to come, the vision that sees the world as a splendid place with good fairies and brave knights and glistening castles reaching towards the sky, the radiant curiosity that finds adventure in simple things, the mystery of billowy clouds and the miracle of snowflakes and the magic of growing flowers, the tolerance that forgets differences as quickly as your childish quarrels are spent, that holds no grudges, that hates never, that loves people for what they are, the genuineness of being oneself, to be done with sham and pretense and empty show, and to be simple and to be natural and to be sincere, the courage that rises from defeat and tries again, as you with laughing face rebuild the house of blocks that topples to the floor, the believing heart that trusts others, knows no fear, and has faith in a divine father who watches over his children from the sky, the contented trusting mind that at the close of the day woes the blessing of childlike slumber, little child, we would become like you, that we may find again the kingdom of heaven within our hearts. And I told you that call to worship that I picked out. Christ's teachings on the mount. I don't know that in that sixth chapter of Matthew, I do not know if we really know and really understand what's there. And it came to pass that as Jesus taught his disciples, he said unto them, Take heed that you do not your alms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, you have no reward of your Father who is in heaven. Alms. Make it very plain. Charity and giving and offering. That's it. That's it. You can put it all right there together and you've got alms and you've got just exactly what God wants you to have within you and to share with each and every one that you come in contact with. Therefore, when thou doest alms, do not sound a trumpet before, before thee as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when, and I want you to notice that in this, on this verses of scriptures, it says when and when and when and when. It doesn't say if that you do these alms. Not one time does it ever say if. It says when. And when thou doest alms, let it be known, let it be unto thee as thy left hand, not knowing what thy right hand doeth that thy alms may be in secret, and thy father who seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. And when thou prayest, and when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. For verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut the door, pray to thy father who is in secret, and thy father who seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. 
But when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the hypocrites do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Therefore, be ye not like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things you have need of before you ask him. Therefore, after this manner, ye pray, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And I want you to listen what you're praying for. You've prayed this prayer so many times. Listen. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth that is as done as heaven, as it is done in heaven. That's what he wants first. You go down there to the 38th verse. If you go down there to the 38th verse in the 6th chapter of Matthew, it tells you very plainly that Jesus knew that he knew that the kingdom, he knew that he, we could bring it forth when he told his disciples, seek ye first, first to build the kingdom of God and to establish his righteousness. And here you are up here. Play thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth that is done in heaven. How important it is. Is there anything else needed? Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And suffer us, suffer us not to be led into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I'd like to tell you, when you're praying that prayer, and you have many times, and you will many times in the days ahead, I want you to remember one thing. Faith. Faith to believe that all that you're praying for can come to pass, if only you'd let it be. Thank you.
Our dear God and gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this church. We thank you for the beliefs that we have. We thank you for the teachings that you have given us. We come to you at this time, hopefully with open ears and pure hearts, to hear your word once again. We ask that you might be with our brother and your servant, Tom, as he stands before us, that his words might be from you, and that those words might be a positive impact in our lives, that we might know that you are watching over us. And we just thank you for the love that you give us, and that we might spread that love throughout this world. We ask that your spirit might be with us as we go through this service. In Jesus' name, amen. Our Father who art in heaven, we do come again, Father, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I know that each one of us, Father, are so very well aware of all that you have given unto each one of us. And I know, Father, that we're aware that there are many things that we need to give unto you. And I know it is very pleasing unto you that today we do cast into this basket so uh, money is father that can be used to keep up this beautiful house of worship, the church of your son, the Lord Jesus Christ, that can be used, Father, to reach out and give to those who stand in need in various ways. But we know, Father, that uh, there is so much more to give unto you. And I would pray that as we think about, Father, the days that are before us, we might think about those things that we still have deep down within us, Father, that we need to cast aside so that we might have that closer walk with you, Father, that you desire each and every one of us to be upon. So I would just ask, Father, that each one of us might think about what you have given unto us. I ask that we think, Father, about what you're giving to us even this day. But I would ask us to open our minds and to open our hearts and think, Father, about what it is that you still have in store for each and every one of us. And may we work, Father, more diligently than ever before 
to receive of each and every one of those things. And I pray these things, Father, in the blessed name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Good to be with you. And on Children's Day, it's extra good to be with me. Be with you. I can, you can be with me. When the Lord was here walking up on earth, many, many times, He watched the children. And one particular time, He was meeting. On the hill. And he looked out and he saw these uh, disciples said, Hey, bring the children away. I didn't want you around. You, you was interfering with the master. Master looked out and said, Hey, suffer those little children to come unto me. For if such is the kingdom of God, He said, except we become as a little child, we cannot enter into the kingdom of God. My mind goes back. I can go back quite a ways when I was about your age. And I remember when we was kid, we didn't have to have a speaker. We had the kids. They brought the program on Children's Day. I remember, remember Dolores? 
used to sit over here all the time? Well, when I was your age, she was my teacher. She was my teacher. And I can remember her working one, one year, we brought Master of the Tempest is Rising. Peace be still. But you remember that song? We don't sing it much. That was a hard song for us kids. And boy, she worked and she worked and she worked on that. We sung it on Children's Day. And then we usually had baptism on Children's Day. We got a little early this year, Michael. We couldn't wait. Couldn't keep him waiting, I know. But uh, we usually have our baptism on Children's Day. It's a good day. But that's a long time ago. Time has changed. And you know, <coughs> kind of hard to <coughs> preach after Brother John gets up there and takes your sermon from you. <coughs> and John laughed back there. He used to do the same thing. Every time I had to preach, John was in charge of something. He brought the whole sermon. But you know what? God still works with us. He still comes and he says, it's hard to repeat. He says, we can repeat these things. But I, I like to ask, how many children do we have in here? How many kids got children? All right, I, I seen one sticking her hand up here. Yeah, they, they come up. I hope all of you are a child. A child. If you're not a child of God, you, you're not going to make it the kingdom of God. You left out. Plain and simple. It says so right here. Except you become as a child of Jesus. God, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Now, that simplifies it. I'm a kid now. 89-year-old kid. I hope he accepts me that. Kind of hard to know is keep that on kids thing, but I uh, got to thinking about some of the men that Christ called to work and to serve. And uh, I don't know something about this old Jonah. You remember Jonah story of Jonah? Oh, I love that guy. He he was an honor guy. He didn't want to do what the Lord wanted him to do. I get that way. God told Jonah to go to Nineveh. He says, I want you to go and I want you to tell those people to repent. I love those children. They're my kids. I want them. I want them in the kingdom of God and I want you to go and you tell them, Jonah. Tell them to repent and change their ways. Jonah says, he knew, he says, if I did it, he'd just forgive him. So he tried to hide from God. He said, hey, I'm going to get away. I'm going to go hide. He tried it. He didn't make it, did he? God knew where he was. He knew where he went. He knew he got on the ship to go away. He knew he was hiding down. down but uh, God caused a big storm to come up. And the sailor knew that something was wrong because the sea was quiet, everything was just as nice until they started to sail. They knew God was angry, angry at them. Come find out, <laughs> they found Jonah hiding. They said, what are you doing there? I'm a man of God. I'm hiding from him. I'm hiding from him. And that's why God is angry. They said, well, what can we do about it? He said, well, you can take me up and throw me overboard. Throw me overboard. Get rid of me. I'll take care of your problem. 
They didn't want to do that. <coughs> Finally, they had to do it. They had to take Jonah and throw him over. But you know what? God wasn't done with Jonah. He wasn't getting away that easy. He wasn't getting away that easy. God had prepared a big fish. What was that fish? You remember what it's called? What was it? Whale? Yeah, it's whale. He called a whale. He called this big old fish to suck him up. Poor Jonah. Didn't have no choice. Down with the water, the seaweeds, and anything else that big old mouth could take. And he went down in the deep, 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 deep sea. Way down. I hear Jonah down in the belly of the well. Seaweeds are wrapping all around him. I don't know where he had a room down there. He had head out of water. I don't know how it took place. But I know he was down there for three days. The Bible said he was there for three days. And while he was there, he began to think, hey, Lord, take my life. Kill me. Let me go. Call me home. The Lord said, no, Jonah. No, Jonah. You have a job to do. You're not getting off that easy. You have a job to do. So Jonah repented. And when he repented, he asked forgiveness. God calls that whale to come back up top of the water to land. He burped him out. And then God told Jonah, he said, you go down to Nineveh and you tell him what I told you to. He's still stubborn, but he went. He went about a day journey, about three days across Nineveh, pretty good size city. He went in about a day and told the message that God has given him. You are to repent to change your ways or else you will be destroyed. Did they change their ways? Yes. Even the king got a word of that message. He said, now, everyone, every one of you, people, stock, and all, cattle and all, too fast, Go without food and water. I want you to fast and change your ways or we will be destroyed. You know what happened? They repented. They repented and God saved them. It was his children. He didn't want to destroy them. They became his children. And poor Jonah, still had a little trouble. He, you know, he had out, went out and he built him. He went out where he could watch what's going on. He built him a little arbor out here, a place where he could <coughs> sit. And God caused Gordon, he had big vine and all that, to come up. Well, he had it pretty easy that for a day. God caused a worm to come, and he ate that gourd. And then he was out in the sun. So he was still suffering. But he learned one thing, and it stuck down to us. You can't hide from God. You No way can you hide from God. I don't care how deep a hole you want to dig yourself into. He knows where you're at. He knows it. That's just one story. And another thought came to me. I always like this Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I tell it, I, I think about it. I don't know how familiar you are with fire or heat. 
How many of you women, what you te- set your heat temp for your ovens? About 375, 400? Do you ever think if you could turn it up about three, four times that much? About 12, 16, 1800 degrees? That gets pretty orange. You turn your fire on, your burner gets up pretty orange. If you could measure the heat there, it would probably uh, around 1600 degrees. If it gets up a little whiter, a little yellower, it goes on up to 18, 2100, pretty white. I used to heat treat metal. And you had to know your heat. I was thinking about Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. By the way, I also know what these furnaces are. They go, I can imagine they had a big furnace. What did they do with the furnace at that time? They dried bricks, didn't they? That's what they was doing. They was making bricks in prison. And they was drying these big, we called them kills when I was a kid, big dome building at Deepwater, a tile factory, where they had, uh, they made these dot tiles, you see around, brown tiles, but they make it out of clay and they put it in, kill and they turn the kills on, up to about 18, 1900 degrees to bake them. So you know how hot that is, and this is what happened. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They already been tried by God. They already been tried by the people. And that's why they was looking to get even with them because they wanted them to eat. Same food the Egyptian was. And they said, no, they wouldn't do that. So they had a contest with them. And they won, so they was angry with them. And so they was finding out why. And they wouldn't bow. They wouldn't give, go against their God. So they caused them to come and be cast in the furnace. That was a rule. If he didn't bow before the gods, he would be cast in the fiery furnace. So they took these three men, and the king says, they had the furnace going already. He said, heat it up more. Turn more fuel and heat it up. I don't want to use fuel. fuel. I don't have them in. Deep water, they use oil. Blow to them. But they heated the furnace seven times hotter. Hot enough that when they went, throwed the three men in, found them, throw them in. The ones that throw them in was killed. Instantly burnt to death. We know the story. And the king looked down there and says, hey, there's four guys down there walking around. What happened? The four guys in there. It's Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. There's one that looks like the Son of God. There's one that looks like the Son of God. Who is that? Jesus? Yes. He was there with them. I could verify that these men that got burnt to death, I can tell you of surety that when you had that kind of heat come out and hit you in the face, something's going to happen. I had that happen. I can testify of it. I worked at a foundry. I was pouring, heating up the metal, the aluminum. And part of the furnace went out. So I went to relight it that morning. Oil didn't catch as quick. But when it did catch it, whoom, right back out through the channel. I had to go home. 
I had no eyebrows, no eyelashes. My hair was gone. I can tell you it's hot. I can tell you how the Lord blesses you. Before I let, went to work that morning, we got down on our knees. We had prayer. We had prayer. And we asked for protection for that day. Well, I went home. Alberta cleaned me up as good as could. Couldn't get the smell going. But put salve on. I turned around and went back to work. Did God hear our prayers? Is he interested in you and me? Yeah. He said, if you have served me, I'll be there for you. I'll be there with you. You're my child. You're my, my kid. We had many experiences like that. I can tell you a lot. I've told you a lot of them. Occasionally I get one come back to me I haven't even thought of. But I know. I know that my God loves me. I don't know why he puts up with me. I'm not as valued in testimony. I'm not as valued in service. But I find he's there for me. You are 69 years. Well, we'll be 69 in December. I find many, many times where he has blessed us. Where he has called us to go service. Been called in to help people that are dying on their bed. He called it at home when person sick on the bed. He hadn't had his dishes done for two, three, maybe weeks. I don't know what it was. We, we found out when you ask God to use you, you better be careful what you say. Be careful what you offer for Because when he calls you, he calls you to work. He calls you to service. He's blessed us with pretty good kids, children. They're still kids to us. But you know what? We we'll begin to depend on them more than they depend on us. And I'm glad God gave them to us. We've seen many come and go. Many little ones come into the world. Many of them go. God has blessed me in my ministry many a time. I was able to help with my mother's funeral. I'm the last of the group now. There's eight of us now. I'm the last of my family. Albert still got two or three left. Got one in the hospital now we don't know about. But like I said, I don't like to do funeral. I'll have another one pretty quick probably to do. I've done five of ours. I went through five of our own kids. But I want this to know that through all of our trials, God has blessed us. 
He said, if you keep my commandments and do my will, I will be there with you. I'll be there for you. I will lift you up. I will strengthen you. So this morning I know there's the children of God that he loves us. He has a responsibility for us. Sorry, I was getting the kids set now. <clears throat> I'd like to leave with you the Beatitudes. There's so much meaning in them. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are they who believe on me, and again, more blessed are they who shall believe on your words. Now, they're talking to the disciples, but he's talking about you. If we bear witness of the knowledge of God, which he gives to us, and people believe on him, more blessed are they. When you shall testify that you have seen me, and that I am, yea, blessed are they who shall believe on your words and come down into the depth of humility and be baptized in my name for they shall be visited with fire with the Holy Ghost and shall receive it as remission of their sin. Yea, blessed are the poor in spirit who come unto me for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Again, blessed are they that mourn they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they that do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled with the Holy Ghost. And blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. And blessed are all they, are the, all the pure in heart. I like this one. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Have you seen God yet? Have we got pure enough in heart that we can see God? Oh, we see his ways. We know that he's there. We feel what he does to us. But I haven't been able to see him yet. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And blessed are all the peacemakers. I like this. This is gonna this is gonna qualify us. Blessed are all the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. And that's what I that. Are we the children of God? Now I ask you, I'll go. How many children of God do we have in here? Yeah, that, come on, all of you. You better be. You better be. You never know when you walk out that door if you're not now. Maybe too late. Maybe too late. Blessed are all the pure in heart for their secure. And blessed are all the peacemakers for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are all they that persecute, are persecuted for my name's sake. For there is a kingdom of heaven. Have you been persecuted? Had people look down upon you because you're a Latter-day Saint? Are we afraid to say, hey, I'm a recognized Latter-day Saint? Are, are we feel free to do that? We're kind of iffy about it. <coughs> you don't have to answer it to me, but you have to answer it to the Lord. But I like the rest of this. Blessed are all who are persecuted for my name's sake, for there is a kingdom of heaven. For you are in the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely. 
Make sure it's falsely what they say. For my sake. For ye shall have great joy. Be sitting glad, glad, for great shall be your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, I give unto you be the salt of the earth. But if the salt shall lose his savor, wherewith shall the earth be salted? The salt shall thenceforth be good for nothing, but to be cast out and to trod underfoot a man. I don't know how you are with salt. But no, when I eat food, if it's not right, so and I know, I don't care. I don't add add anything. But I've seen them come around before they ever taste it. Well, God give us to be the salt of the earth. I don't know how much He sprinkles us. I don't know how much He shakes had to shake us. But you know what? I know this, that he loves each and every one of you. And he calls us his children. And he wants us to call him Father, God. When we call God, God and his son, Jesus, his son, they acted to him, Holy Ghost, the three of them. We can take them and allow them to work within our lives. And take us by the hand. And say, come on home. Well done, good and faithful servant. I don't know when that's going to happen. <coughs> any of us. We've had it happen here lately. Have and I know. I know when he says that we will be ready. We'll go to a more wonderful place. This is beautiful. This is wonderful. We can come together and worship. But I don't think it can compare with where we're going. I don't think it's, we can compare it. brothers and sisters and children of God. I love all of you. God loves all of you. He wants each and every one of us to love him and to come to him. And also to say thank you, Lord. That's the main thing. Don't forget to thank you. <coughs> oh, by the way, they're talking about the Shadrach, Meshach, and the fire. I'm looking in the Book of Mormon today. It tells also another couple men that had been teaching the gospel. Lehi and Ephi was in prison. They come in to, care, to take them to kill them, destroy them. God had built around them a ring of fire, a ring of fire encircled around. They could not get to the men. They could not get to them. So you see, God can do whatever he wants to do. And he will. He'll have it in the end. He'll have his way in the end. We don't matter where we're going to stand. God will win out. May God bless you.
us pray. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for these hours of worship and praise and learning this day. We thank you for thy spirit being with us in these moments of worship. We give you the honor and glory, and we thank you for the spoken word this day. May we take it to heart and go forth and spread it to all those we encounter. May each one of us abide in your word that we may show the world that we are your children and that we carry your word in our heart at all times. Go with us now is our prayer in Jesus Christ's holy name. Amen. <clears throat>